Welcome back to the second example for chapter 8. So we have two blocks sliding towards each other, and they hit each other, and then the 4 kilogram block we know something about, but we want to try to figure out how fast and in what direction the 5 kilogram block is going. Because this is a collision, any time that we have a collision of any kind, things hit each other, then we want to use momentum conservation. The other thing we want to be thinking about is we're trying to draw this we're trying to draw this um, picture into our problem so if you're doing this in your notes make sure you draw this full picture you can label this top one the before the collision situation or initial and this one is the after the final all right in chapter 8 it is probably more important than ever to make a list of the given information. It's something that we've been trying to practice since chapter two. It's the second step of our problem solving technique, but it is more essential than ever that we keep things organized in our heads so that we aren't plugging things into the wrong place and that we aren't using the wrong um, sign, plus or minus sign. All right, so if we decide to read left to right, the four kilogram mass would be object number one, and the five kilogram mass would be object number two. Now, the four kilogram mass at the beginning of the problem is moving at four meters per second, four meters per second, and at the end of the problem is moving to the left, the opposite direction of where it had been moving, and so we're going to call that negative 3 meters per second. If we forget that minus sign, we have completely changed the problem. The 5 kilogram block at the beginning of the, uh, the picture, the beginning before the collision, is also moving left, which means that that 7 should be a negative 7 meters per second when we're going from the speed information to the full velocity information. Picture as step one, list of given information as step two, and identifying the unknown as step three. We are trying to find the final velocity of the five kilogram mass. Because we have a collision, we're using momentum conservation, so we can write down that tool, m1v1 initial plus m2v2 initial, equals m1v1 final plus m2v2 final. There's really not a lot of tricky algebra here. The most important thing to make sure that you are constantly paying attention to is the signs on everything, plus and minus signs, because that is going to be absolutely key. The negative 7 will change the problem if we have it positive. The negative 3 will change the problem if we have it positive. Mass 1 is still 4 kilograms. The final velocity for that is negative. And then we have 5v2f because we don't know that final velocity. So 4 times positive 4 is a positive 16. 5 times negative 7 is negative 35. On the right side, 4 times negative 3 is negative 12 plus 5v2f. So we can add 12 to both sides, and so it cancels out over here. 16 minus 35 plus 12 still ends up being negative 7 equals 5v2f. And so that it doesn't end up here at the bottom, if we divide both sides by 5, negative 7 fifths is what we have as our final answer. So you can leave it like that. I like to put it in decimal form. Negative 1.4 meters per second is V2F. Now, what's important here to recognize is that means that the 5 kilogram block is still moving to the left at a speed of 1.4 meters per second. So we don't necessarily want to assume that the blocks will always bounce apart, but what we can do is we can make sure that this number still is reasonable, our last step in our problem solving process. It hit this block and so if it is moving to the left, it has to be moving slower than it was initially. 
it has to either slow down or change direction if it is involved in a collision like this. So the negative 1.4 meters per second is much slower, so it has lost a lot of um, its personal momentum in the collision because it has transferred that momentum to the 4 kilogram block. That's it for this example. Like I said, the most important thing to keep in mind is the plus and minus signs, and it's possible that things won't always be bouncing apart um, when we have blocks that don't stick together. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. It really just depends on how fast the different blocks are going. That's it for this example. I will see you in the next one.